The first games of spring training marks the spiritual beginning of baseball season. A handful of years ago, this would mean we could start talking about all the crazy off-season moves teams made and start looking forward to opening day. But in recent years, the free agent market has slowed to a sluggish pace, and free agents have remained on the market well into spring training. So today, in no particular order, let's talk about seven MLB players that remain teamless going into the 2021 season, what they bring to the table, their contract demands, and what teams might be in the market for them. The first player we'll talk about is Jackie Bradley Jr. Okay, never mind. The first player we'll talk about is Cole Hamels, the former Phillies ace that signed with the Braves in 2020 and pitched in just one game. Hamels has had a storied career and has a legitimate argument to the Hall of Fame, on top of being an above-average starter as recently as 2019. On the other hand, he's coming off a shoulder injury and is going into his age 37 season. While he had good numbers in 2019, the stat cast numbers were far from encouraging, with subpar exit velocity spin rates and walk rates. That Hamels was able to overcome these to produce a solid ERA and FIP is impressive though, and shows that his trademark cutter and changeup are still solid at getting outs. Will he be able to deliver after a year and a half of barely pitching? I think he still has gas in the tank and could still pitch some league average innings for a contender, which has a good amount of value. I think he's proven enough to not need to settle for a minor league deal, so he'll probably take a one-year prove-it deal in the neighborhood of $5 million. A team looking to contend that needs an innings-eating veteran but has the depth to cover for him if he can't keep up would be ideal, so I think the best fit as of right now is Houston, who just lost Framber Valdez to injury. A reunion with Philadelphia could also be a possibility and will be good for fans. Our next player will be another free agent starter, former Ray and twin Jaco Derizzi. He's probably the best remaining free agent, going into just his age 31 season and having a solid 2019. Unfortunately, he was injured for most of 2020 and sucked in his time on the field. Odorezzi has never been great by traditional or stat cast metrics, but he locates his pitches well to get outs, and in 2019 he had a well above average 10Ks per 9. Similar to Hamels, it'll be interesting to see how he'll bounce back after barely pitching in 2020, which is probably the biggest hangup for teams and why they haven't signed yet. Odorizzi is 6 years younger though, so he's way more likely to bounce back from his injury, although on the other hand he's had a way worse career than Hamels. Overall, Odorizzi will probably sell for a 1 year deal in the neighborhood of $10 million. Since if a team gets 2019 Odorizzi, it'll be a steal, but there's a lot of risk involved. The Astros are a probable landing spot again, and I could see Boston making a play for him too. Let's triple dip into veteran starters with former Cy Young winner Rick Porcello, who's actually just entering his age 32 season, but is coming off pretty unsuccessful 2019 and 2020 seasons with the Red Sox and Mets. Porcello stank in New York last year with a 5-6 ERA, but underneath that had a 3.33 FIP, a huge difference caused by the worst BABIP against of his career. Porcello doesn't miss bats, but his stuff is deceptive enough to get some strikeouts and he has great walk rates. While Porcello has been bad by ERA, his peripherals have been decent in recent years. He also basically hasn't missed a start in 5 years, so if a team needs an innings eater that won't walk too many people, Porcello is definitely the guy. He probably has a lower ceiling than Cole Hamels, but he also has a higher floor, which makes him a good fit for a team more out of contention that just needs guys to save the arms of their younger players, and can ship him off at the deadline if he finds unlikely success. Detroit or Pittsburgh seem like potential landing spots, while a reunion with Boston also seems like a possibility. Let's move to the bullpen now to talk about David Robertson, who basically hasn't pitched in 3 years and is going into his age 36 season, but has excellent career numbers and was one of the best relievers of the 2010s. As recently as 2018, he was excellent at missing bats and extremely successful despite giving up a lot of hard contact. He's another bounce back candidate with a very similar profile to Trevor Rosenthal, so if I were a rebuilding team I'd happily take a flyer on Robertson to see how he does and maybe flip him for prospects at the deadline. He hasn't pitched in a long time so he'll probably need a minor league deal, but look for Robertson to bounce back. On top of rebuilding teams that can flip him, the Brewers and Blue Jays have some holes in their pen that Robertson could address. Our second reliever on the list is a much safer bet that probably has a lower ceiling, former Tiger and Brave Shane Green. Green doesn't throw hard or miss many bats, but his sinker-cutter combo does a good job at inducing soft contact, and he should walk less guys than average. His stackhouse numbers and per nines don't pop, but even out to above average. Green's reliance on bad ball luck means he won't be dominant, but he also probably won't be bad, so he should be a decent middle reliever for a contender. A one-year deal for 2-3 million seems to be a fair price, and I think the Cubs, along with Toronto and Milwaukee, are the contenders with the most question marks in their pen where Green could make a difference. We've only talked pitchers so far, but let's transition to a pair of hitters. First, former Dodger and fan favorite Yasiel Puig, who at one point was thought of as a perennial all-star but has slowly fallen from public consciousness. 
He didn't play at all in 2020 after a pretty mediocre 2019 with Cincinnati and Cleveland, meaning he's a huge wildcard going into the coming season. Puig is 30 now, but still has the tools to be a good player. The issues arise more in mindset and attitude, where Puig's many documented issues with coaching and teammates are likely the reason he isn't signed to a team right now. He actually did sign with Atlanta last year, but it was called off after Puig caught COVID, and he hasn't been linked to a team since. He could still be an above average hitter, but his defense has been consistently bad despite his great tools and highlight plays. Puig at this point is a total wildcard, but if he's willing to take a prove it deal and be a part time player, he could be an asset to a contender, or a way to get fans in the seats for a rebuilding team. He'd be good depth for a team like Tampa Bay, Cleveland, or Houston if he's willing to be a role player, or he could go to Seattle or Colorado if he wants to start. Finally, let's discuss longtime star DH Edwin Encarnacion. After about 10 straight seasons of being a well above average hitter, he was terrible by pretty much every metric in 2020 with the White Sox, especially when you consider he was exclusively DHing. He didn't hit the ball hard, struck out a lot, and didn't draw many walks, and he's going into his age 38 season, so it's not exactly a wonder why he isn't signed. But maybe you just chalk it up to small sample size and bet on his killer pedigree. Or similar to Puig, if Encarnacion agrees to be a role player, he could contribute to a contender or be trade bait on a one year deal for a tanking team. He'll probably retire if he doesn't play this season, so I'd like to see a team in the market for a platoon or part time DH like Oakland take a flyer on him. So there you go, 7 players that are still available to help your favorite team. A common thread is veterans that have shown dominance in the past but had bad or injured shortened 2020 seasons that makes them decent buy low candidates. I don't think any of these players are going to have star turns in 2021, but keep an eye on them to be productive despite staying on the market this long. Thanks for sticking around, if you're enjoying the content it helps me out a ton to sub to the channel and maybe leave a comment if you think I forgot somebody. As always thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.